Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to St. Mary's here in Nash, as today we celebrate together the Feast of Christ the King. Uh, Christ who is enthroned upon the cross, who after his resurrection ascended on high to take his seat at the right hand of God. Um, Christ who will one day come again um, when his kingdom comes in all its fullness. He rules over all the earth. So we'll be thinking about Christ as our king throughout the service, um, in the the service, the, the readings, and in our hymns. If this is your first time joining us, a particularly warm welcome to you. Um, if you want to know any more about what we're up to, um, want to get in touch about anything, um, you can find all that stuff on our website. We'd love to hear from you. But as we gather to worship, we're going to sing the first of our hymns. Um, do feel free to sing along. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, uh, maybe other people are around or we feel weird singing on your own. Um, do feel free to worship along in your heart. Um, but we're going to join with the first of our hymns, O Worship the King. worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. 
Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So we pray together. King of glory, once crowned with thorns, may the servants of your kingdom, who you call your friends, be inspired to hunger and thirst, to see justice and righteousness prevail for your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ became obedient unto death for us, even death upon a cross. He was pierced for our sins, bruised for no fault but our own. His punishment has brought us peace. By his wounds we are healed. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom strength and honour, glory and praise. Amen. So we listen to our readings and Rachel is going to read those for us. Uh, And then Jeremy is going to preach. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from their countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may your spoken word and may your written word lead us to your living word, our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Looking back over the past eight very difficult months, one of the things that's really impressed me is how in this time of crisis, communities have come together to support one another. As I've chatted to people on the phone, as I've met people as I've been travelling about, so many people have told me how they've appreciated what may seem to be very small acts of kindness. Someone offering to go shopping, someone offering to pick up a prescription, or perhaps a telephone call to check on somebody's well-being. People have said to me how they've found those things to be such a lifeline. I think in this very difficult climate, being a good neighbour, doing small acts of kindness is so important and it's meant far more than any of us might actually imagine. And it's made me realise that so often we fail to recognise those small acts of kindness that people show to us, perhaps to fully appreciate them. I also hope the past eight months and the months that lie ahead have been an opportunity for all of us to try and show some of those acts of kindness as we're able to to other people. In our Gospel reading for today, we encounter two groups of people. The first group discover to their amazement that the acts of kindness that they've shown to others were more significant than they'd first realised. It's only at the end of their lives as they stand before God's presence 
that they'd been made aware that what seemed like ordinary, everyday acts of kindness and consideration had been so appreciated. But also, those things had been seen and been recognised by God himself as an act of service. Not just for the people who've been helped, as grateful as they would have been, I'm sure, but recognised and appreciated by God himself. What might at the time have been considered quite trivial acts of kindness have a much deeper dimension to them. They've been appreciated far more than they recognised, even by God himself. Through engaging in the ordinary business of life, people have discovered that actually they'd engaged with the eternal. When did we see you? They asked the Lord. And he replies, in so far as you've done this, to one of the least, you did it to me. By supporting their family, their friends, their neighbours, those people were actually engaging with the Lord himself. Their kindness and their love had consequences far beyond anything they may have imagined. And the parable suggests that God sees the real value of what we do with our lives far more than we may sometimes see it ourselves. That's a difficult concept for many of us to comprehend fully, isn't it? To understand that in our dealings with each other, something of God is being reflected. It says something important about our relationship with God. In the everyday things of life, we both encounter and we serve God so often without realising it. The care that we may show to a sick loved one is love and care we give to the Lord. The kindness we show to a neighbour in need is the kindness we show to the Lord, and so on. So the first part of that parable emphasises the important significance of those very simple acts of goodness and kindness which we do. But then we come to that second group of people and they're reminded about what they've actually failed to do. When we begin our Eucharist service, or indeed most of our acts of worship, we commence with the words of a confession. And I hope that you've noticed that in those words, we don't just acknowledge the things that we've done that are wrong, but we ask forgiveness for what we've left and done as well. That second group of people hadn't been accused of committing a violent crime or a serious offence. They stand accused because they, were fa they failed to respond to the human need that was in front of their eyes. And if we're honest, and we think back over the past few days, the past weeks, I wonder if we're able to recognise those times when we might have failed to do something that we should have done. Now let's be honest, there's always more that all of us can do than we are able to. And I think there is a danger in this parable of reflecting on it and then um, seeing Jesus thinking us, sending us off on some huge guilt trip. We all can do more. Burdening ourselves with guilt over what we fail to do isn't God's will for us either. Jesus doesn't tell this parable to add to the burdens that we already carry, but rather to encourage us to be more attentive to those among us who may be struggling with life. Those who are in particular need of some love and care. He encourages us to think deeply about how we might respond to those in need in the best way that we are able. And we're assured that by being attentive to those needs, then we become more attentive to the Lord's presence in our lives. The parable calls us to take responsibility for caring for each other, to follow the example of Jesus, who always found time to meet the needs of the most vulnerable of his day. 
And the Bible provides us with all number of images of Jesus. But one of my favourite is the image of Jesus as servant. I'm speaking to you today from what I use as my prayer space in the rectory. And I've got on the wall um, just behind me an image of Jesus as the servant washing his disciples' feet. It was something that was given to me as an ordination present. And it always reminds me of our call to serve, to serve God, but also to serve one another. We remember that Jesus calls us to demonstrate his love in a real and a practical way. Well, today in this um, last Sunday of the church's year, we're celebrating the feast of Christ the King. It's a reminder about the Lordship of Jesus. But we're reminded he isn't a king or a lord in the earthly sense, but he is the one who is a servant king. Jesus provides us with an example of how we should seek to live out our lives, and he calls us to follow him and his example. It's a wonderful story, um, which goes back to the 16th century, at the time of King Henry VIII. And Bishop Hugh Latimer, who was a great leader of the church at the time, had been asked to preach at St James's Palace in London. Well, on this particular Sunday morning, as he entered into the pulpit, he looks out and sees King Henry VIII in the congregation. He knew what he needed to say that day, and he needed to say it honestly. But he also knew that it wasn't going to go down very well with King Henry. Just before he began his sermon, he prayed, and he prayed it loudly so everybody could hear. And he prayed the words, Latimer, be careful what you say today, because King Henry is here. But then Bishop Latimer thought just for a few moments longer. And again, he prayed loudly, Latimer, be careful of what you say today, because the King of Kings is here. Today, the King of Kings is here. He's with us. And I pray that each of us might encounter that King of Kings in our worship today. Then as we encounter him, we go out and we show his love. We become his servants in this coming week. Amen. So we're going to sing the second of our hymns. You might know it, um, you might not. It's hopefully fairly easy for you to pick up as we go. Um, but it's the hymn, Hill Redeemer, King Divine. Thou King of glory bright, be 
to us, eternal light. Angels, saints, and nations sing. Praise be Jesus Christ, our King. Lord of life, earth, sky, and sea. King of the whole Calvary. Shepherd, King of the Majesty. our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took on human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known to the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we come to our intercessions, and Paul is going to lead us in those this morning. Let us pray. Our responses to our prayers this morning, when I say, Lord, your kingdom come in us, please respond as it is in heaven. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Let us now take a few moments of stillness as we bring our prayers and petitions to Christ the King. Let us pray. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. We give you our love and offer you our lives. Come, Lord, and rule in our hearts until your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Christ, our King, and reign over us as you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever. Amen. Christ our King, keep us calm and faithful in all troubles. Let us not be afraid, for you rule over us, all and all your kingdom will come to us. Christ the King, we ask that we can strengthen our faith to continue in the prayer for those affected with the COVID-19 in the world. We ask for those who serve in the National Health Service and those who work in all the services who have to go to work in the time of this national emergencies. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Christ our King, give strength to those who work in our ministry area, for our churches, congregations and those in the community who care for each other in the time of need. Lord, your kingdom come in us. Christ our King, give strength and direction to all who seek to be your disciples. Guide all who proclaim your coming and your kingdom. Lord, your kingdom come in us, and in it is in heaven. Christ our King, may we know you are ever present in all life. 
who are there at the centre of power where decisions are made. And we ask especially at this time, as the scientists of this world strive to produce a vaccine for the pandemic in our world. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Christ our King, we pray for all who seek injustice and maintain order, for all rulers and people in authority. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Christ our King, rule in our hearts and in our homes. May love, peace and forgiveness be known amongst us. May we seek to show we belong to you and you love us. We pray for the broken homes and broken hearted people. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Christ our King, give hope and vision to the suffering. Let them be aware of your love and your kingdom. Keep, O Lord, in your grasp all who are losing their grip on life. Enfold in your love all who are fearful and anxious. And Father, we pray for the troubled in body, mind or spirit. And remember before you all who are ill. In hospital, in hospice, and in care homes. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Father, we give thanks that you are Lord of all. Your kingdom cannot fail. Death has no dominion over us. We give thanks that your kingdom is everlasting kingdom and our loved departed ones are with you in glory. We pray for our friends and loved ones once departed, and in just a moment of quietness, we remember them in our hearts and mind. Lord, your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Most merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of our love, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as we pray in the words you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's the collect prayer for today. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. A few notices before we finish. Uh, it's been really good to have you with us this morning. Like I said, if you want to know anything more about what we're up to, um, you can find out lots of stuff on our website. And if you can't find it there, um, do give one of us a ring or send us an email. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, the, today is the Feast of Christ the King, the final feast of the church's year, which means next Sunday, um, we begin a new church year and we begin Advent. Um, I can't quite believe it's here already. It's snuck up on us a bit. Um, but Advent is a, uh, a time of preparation for Christmas um, and also a time of, of expectant waiting for Christ's return. 
Um, so we hope you'll join with us um, online for Advent. We have some special stuff planned and some other things planned throughout Advent. Um, and we'll also be publishing soon all our Christmas and Advent services, which will be happening in the buildings in the ministry area. So do please keep an eye out for that. It'll be good for us to gather together um, as Christmas approaches to slow down um, and to reflect on what all this means for us. So let's take a moment to be still as we prepare to go out um, to do God's work and God's will in the week ahead. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So as we go, we sing the final of our hymns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Yeah. Mm-hmm.